Hi, in this video I'm going to look inside the Yamaha AVC30 amplifier as well as the Yamaha TX530 tuner later in the video as well. Let's have a look at the amp first. Cooling louvers above and below the heat sink. A few Sanyo and Toshiba chips there on that board and it's well fused on four fuses so two there and two more on top here And the motorized volume control was a bit scratchy, so along with all the other pots on the front of the amp, I've given them all a clean. And that has solved the issue of the scratchy pot on the volume knob. And that's some of the other pots there. And yeah, I've seen this. This doesn't look too good. And this might explain what happened but more about that later i've used this version of deoxid to clean up the pots with and like i said the pots have cleaned up fine and work fine however the amp no longer works satisfactory it worked really well when i first got it it was a really solid sounding amp and everything it's it was just gorgeous sounding and um second third day all that um, started fading away, started losing bass um, just gradually, day by day, until later today when I lost um, all sound. That's with the surround mode off. There's no sound coming out of any of the speakers. With surround sound on, it works on speakers B, but nothing coming out of the speakers A, eh? so um, yeah, not too good, not too happy. So I've got the Yamaha RXV450 hooked up back to the system, and that sounds toy compared to this amp, I'm afraid. Yeah, in this case, through the same speakers, you'll definitely be able to pick the amplifiers apart, which one is playing. If both of them work, that is... Yeah, so let's have a look at the matching tuner TX530 that came with the system. And let's have a look inside as well. And that's looking pretty clean inside. That's the back of the front fascia. On off switch. The transformer and the power board. And this board here is pretty easy to get to to remove if if you need to get anything done on it. I didn't like that uh, capacitor there. I thought it was a bit bulgy, so I ended up taking out the board. And that was a Yamaha chip there. Let's take a look at the back of the front fascia. This is a display illumination behind that uh, plastic. There's two globes wired into that and all the selector buttons. Yes, yeah, so I've decided to uh, remove that circuit board by removing the screws that hold the connectors at the back. And that's them. And there's two more screws on the side of that board. 
already taken out and it clips in at the top there as well and um, it comes out I've left everything plugged in and this is a capacitor on the power board on the power side of things that I thought was a bit bulgy and I decided to buy a new one and replace it since the board's so easy to take out so I've got an equivalent here I'm not going to bore you with soldering but I've pulled that one out and the replacement goes in next observing the polarity and that's the side with a stripe indicates the polarity well I just thought I'll replace that capacitor as a precaution since that one uh, the original one was um, a bit bulgy saves me doing it later I suppose but you can see on the board that there was something going on with that um, capacitor there and with a new capacitor it works exactly as it did before but perhaps um, some of the gremlins, intermittent gremlins might be eliminated, eliminated with the capacitor soldered in let's check it out, see if it still works and yes it still powers up and works just like it did before so now it's back to the drawing board and I'll have to look, have a look at the amplifier again I suppose in more detail thank you for watching and see you next or the previous video